Hi, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today let's work on a Word document, and we're going to add letterhead to this Word document. So let's go ahead and start. From your opening screen, we're going to launch Microsoft Word 2007, and a blank Word document is going to come up, and what we're going to do is change our margins the first thing. That's normally the first thing you would do. To change margins in Word, you're going to go up to the tab called Page Layout and you're going to select that tab and then you want to go to Margins that you'll see somewhat below it and go all the way down to Custom Margins. Now for this particular exercise I want the top margin to be at 0.2. That's as close as we can get and still be in the printable area and I'm going to change the other margins to one inch is fine. So bottom left and right go to one inch and the top margin is at 0.2. The orientation should be portrait style. So click on portrait. Say okay. The first thing we need in a Word document and that's going to be a letterhead document is the, an image. The image can represent the company, it can be your personal letterhead, um, which whatever your purpose may be today and what we want to do is insert an image. So I have some images prepared. So we'll go to insert picture. Uh, go down to my computer if you're on our network and go down to Drive S which is also called Student Common Folder. Open that up and go to the Davis folder. Open that and we have the CIS 101 folder and we'll open that and we have lots of graphics in here the one we need right now is the citrus graphic that you'll see and insert that that comes in and plants itself nicely on your word page and it's not the right size and it's really not in the right place and we need to apply some text wrapping so that it will let you have the control to type text out here because right now it will not let you type text out here. So let's, uh, and right now we can't even move it if we wanted to because it's treating the box like it's text instead of an image. So to do, to fix that, let's click on the image and you'll see picture tools arrive at the top of your toolbar. Under that, under that it says format. So click on format and the tool we need next is called text wrapping. Click on the text wrapping tool. The one we need today is square. The other ones we'll use in different situations, but this works fine for today, so pick square. At this point, we are now allowed to move the image around, still being in, still allowing ourselves to be in the printable area, don't want any leaves cut off, and I'm going to resize it just a little bit smaller. And now you'll notice I click out here because we've set text wrapping to square, the, we, the cursor blinks here, so now it will allow us to have text beside it. Now at this point, we need to center select the center tool on your paragraph alignments and get our cursor over here and with letterhead um, I want it decorative font, I want it bigger so I'm going to just go ahead first of all and type our company name and highlight it then go back in and set the font. Uh, for this one this company name I like to use Bookman Old Style available on most computers. There it is there. Um, otherwise just scroll down to the B's and you'll find it. Uh, you can always just type anywhere you're at on here. Just get your cursor over that area of fonts and just type the first few letters of the font and it will find it for you. Now, Bookman Old Style. I want the size to be um, 36. I think I would like for that to be bold as well. And there we go. Now, I'm at the very end of what I typed, the company name, and the cursor's blinking very large right here, and I want to reduce that cursor size because if I was to hit enter now to get some to get down to the next line, the gap would be incredibly large, not very useful. So what I want to do is go ahead and change the size of the cursor now. To do that, obviously I need to reduce the size of the font. So I'm going to go back to size 10 actually, very small before I hit enter and go to the next line so I don't get that huge gap. Now at this point I want to go back to a line left, have my cursor here, kind of butt it up against that graphic and I'm going to type the company's address but I don't want to do it in Bookman. I want it to be in Times New Roman 
to something easy to read. I always want addresses and phone numbers to be in a normal font that is easy to read. And take the bold off too. And let me just type the company's address here. Oops. At this point I'm going to pause and I'm going to put in a right tab. Normally on your computer you do left tabs when you just want a half inch tab over to indent or whatever the case may be. But we're doing something different. We want the next piece of text to hug uh, the right side of this part and kind of every with every keystroke bounce back toward the middle. So I'm going to set a right tab. and. I'm going to go into the paragraph ribbon, click on the little tiny arrow next to that so I can get the whole screen to come up, and at the very bottom you'll see tabs. And on the tab screen we have tab stop position. We'll put a measurement in there. But one thing we need to address right now is the alignment. We don't want a left tab like normal. We want a right tab this time. And it will send the cursor all the way across to the other side of the page and then kind of backtrack every time you hit a keystroke. So we'll put right and then tap stop position. It depends on the graphic but for this one um, we'll put a six. That means six inches. And the leader we do not need a leader so we'll say, just leave it at none. And we'll say set and OK. And do not um, adjust the default tap stop. Leave that where it defaults to. And just say OK. Set OK. Nothing changes on your screen yet because it's waiting for you to touch the tab button which then sends you to the other side of the page. Now you can go back and adjust this if this is too close to the edge, if it needs to be 5.5 or something like that, that's fine. Um, at this point I would type in the phone number of the company. And I could hit enter, and that sends my cursor back. And because it strikes that um, text, that graphic box, it just kind of lines it up nicely there. And this, at this point, I can type the city and state and zip code in. And the nice thing about this is it remembers your right tab. So if you just hit tab again, it will send your cursor across to the other side. At this point, we can put you know a fax number, an email number, whatever um, you prefer to do there. Now looking at that, I'm not quite happy with the balance, so I can always go back in and just change, highlight that section and go back into the um, tabs again and adjust that. Let's say I didn't like 6. I can um, just clear that out and put a 5.5 and let's back it up a bit. Make sure it's still on right, make sure you set, make sure you say OK. And that looks more balanced, so that's one way to just adjust it until you get it to where it looks balanced to you on the page. Okay, so that's how we do the right tab part. Now, we're not quite done with the letterhead yet. What I'd like to do now is just add a graphical line that basically separates the letterhead from the rest of the letter. So what we can do is insert a shape. And shapes, of course, go to the insert tab then select shapes and lots of shapes to pick from obviously but we just want the simple line and you can see mine's under recently used shapes but I can also just go to lines and select the line shape the first one there and as soon as I select it the cursor changes to a plus sign and that's gonna allow us to draw this graphical line from one edge of the page to the other edge of the page I always like to start right at the edge because I'll let the printer decide where it's going to stop printing at because usually the printer um, is better suited to do that than for me to guess it. Um, at this point if you're feeling a little mouse uh, challenge today and you're not sure you can draw a straight line with the, curse, with, the, with the mouse just hold shift down 
and shift kind of keeps your line straight because so hold shift down while you're drawing the line across and it keeps it very straight all the way across from edge to edge is like is what I like to tell my students and at this point you've got the line drawn you notice it's still active because you have the two little green bubbles at each end if you want to um, change the line modify the line you can make it different colors you can pick shape outline tool here under format drawing tools and it gives you lots of choices of line colors it also gives you choices of weight I use this a lot weight uh, I don't want it that thin I want the weight of the line which means the thickness of the line to be greater than that and I can try these different ones out and see how it affects it so for this word document I like to select three point nice line thickness for this one so at this point we have created our letterhead go ahead stop and save your work you can do control s you can hit the save button uh, navigate back to your own folder and rename your document if necessary hit the save button and you're good to go I'm Dr. Linda Davis have a great day